I'm gonna show you how I'm using the high level AI workflow decision maker for database reactivation. We send a message out, people send a response back. The AI decision maker analyzes what their response was and based on the response, it sends them down different channels like interested, not interested, maybe later, you have the wrong number. What we're doing now is using the AI decision maker to make the decision instead of the old if else statement where if they say this, then do this. If they say this, do this. And we're using AI. I show you all the prompts. I show you step by step how to set it up. And here we go. Let's just dive right in. The AI workflow decision maker, basically what it does is high level people come through a workflow and the AI decision maker based on prompts gives you the ability to send people down specific branches. Okay. De determining on how you prompt it. Now, what I decided to do was I decided to give it the instructions that you're responsible for deciding which branch a person goes down based on their most recent SMS reply. Classify their response in one of the following exact branch names. Interested, not interested, not right now, already has service, wrong number, do not contact rules. Only respond with one of these exact branch names. Do not include quotes, numbers, punctuations, or extra words. I had to do that because it was it was kind of bugging out a little bit. And the response, what it's talking about is inside of the execution logs. If we go to Workflow Decision Maker, it kicks out a response. Workflow AI response. And then it and then it decides which branch it had it went down. Now, if I didn't specify in the prompt how I wanted the AI to, to the AI workflow response, if I didn't specify this, it was like it was not telling the workflow builder exactly what I needed it to do. So that's why that's that's why I built the prompts and have the prompts a bit available for you guys. So rules do not include quotes, numbers, punctuations, words, do not explain your choice, respond with the branch name only exactly as written above. So all of a sudden, a contact comes through this, the contact hits this node, and AI reads all of this information, and it says, okay, I need to make a decision based on this prompt. Then I needed to feed it the last message because unlike other platforms, the AI workflow, the AI decision maker is not reading a conversation. You have to prompt it and then you can select one of the custom fields or custom values to then help it determine which branch I wanted it to go down. So what I did was I selected message and then message body and I prompted it saying, hey, listen, because the AI decision maker does a, does a variety of things. I want it to be able to send people down a branch based on their last response. So I had to feed it the last response. Now, what I could do is I could prompt it based on a, a specific field. I could, I could prompt it based on a specific user. I could prompt it based on a specific appointment. So let's say... Let's say I plug in appointment start date and time, okay? And I'll, I'll make sure I remove this. I can prompt it to say, hey, if the appointment is, is 10 days before this date, go down this branch. If it's five days before this date, go down this branch. If it's the day of, go down this branch. If it's 10 days after, go down this branch. That's just one example of how else I could use the AI appointment decision maker, but I'm using it for database reactivation. Now, I then gave it some additional context because I wanted it to be as accurate as possible. I said, we are a business and I, and I actually have a template for you, Patrick, that you go in and you just fill out what you need to fill out. Okay. Beautiful. It says, we are a business offering a reputation management tool that helps real estate agents turn past clients into in their database into five-star reviews. 
this is the outbound message that they are getting. And then it sends, it shows the AI workflow decision maker. So it's just giving them context on what the outbound message is and how they respond. Your job is to evaluate their reply and route them into the correct branch using their wording and tone to determine intent. Now, this is a little bit redundant from the instructions. However, it's working, so I don't I'm not I'm not I don't plan on doing anything different. This says if the contact expresses interest or wants more information, classify them as interested. If the contact says no or shows disinterest, classify them as not interested. And then it goes through and if the contact, you know, says not right now, classify them as not right now. If the contact says they already have a similar tool or a system, classify them as has service. And then it, it goes through and it tells them based on these instructions, which one of these options they should be classified as based on their response. Okay, so that's the instructions. Then I have to feed it the last message. I did feed it the last message in the additional context. This is, again, probably a little bit redundant. Now, we have to go in and we have to name the branches. Now, here's one of the keys with the AI workflow decision maker is the branches have to match exactly what you put in the instructions. Because remember, what it's doing is, is it's taking the prompt and the information, and then it's generating a response, and it's sending a, an AI response back to high level, and it's saying, hey, this is the response. And then based on that response, it's sending them down a channel. So if I were to put interested and put an extra D right here, right. It, it would not put them down th this branch because the branch title is interested or, right. and it would be with two D's, but I have it prompted that the response needs to be one D. Right. This is where I ran into a very big issue because I could not get it to function. And guess why? I had this. I had interested ah. space. Yeah. Yeah. So I was it read the space. Yeah. It read the space and I was pulling my hair out and I was sending chat GPT back and forth saying like, why is it not sending people down the right path? And then finally chat GPT said, you might have a stringed space. So I went through, found out that there was a space after one of them because all the other branches were working except for that one. Then I noticed when I was going to execution logs is that sometimes it would say this person needs to go down interested branch, but then it would say, sometimes it would say this person needs to go down branch three, which branch three didn't mean anything. And so it would send people down the default branch. That's when I learned that you need to, in the instructions, specify branch names, branch titles, and then what actually determines which branch they go down all of this around their very last text message response or email response because it would work for emails as well. And then the next step was each branch even gets a description. So I added a little bit more context, like go to this branch if the contact expresses interest or wants or wants more information. Here are some examples. So I wanted this to be as as foolproof as possible with the AI decision maker, all of my opportunity updates. Oh, are all yes, of, yes, I get it. Workflow, I don't have to create workflows in addition to this. So now, when someone gets put down the answer of wrong number, I just build it right here, create new opportunity reputation management, reach out, put them in the do not contact. Then it waits 24 hours and it deletes their contact information. Beautiful. And so, Beautiful. so that is what the workflow AI decision maker does is a contact goes through and based on how you prompt it and the additional context and the branch names 
it gives it makes the workflows much smarter and gives people the ability to move contacts through different branches based on prompting and things that you've set up as opposed to the old way, which was the if else. Right. Right. That you would have to create a branch and say, if this person says this, 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 or this, move them down this branch. If they say this, 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 move them down this branch. So it's really, really, really made the high level workflow much smarter and then like i said we can duplicate it so we got the second message then we just duplicated the exact same uh thing and the only difference was i just fed it the different message so that it can take the response and it understands the context and now it's moving people cleanly through this workflow and you can see that it's working already has that service. So that is how I am using the high level AI workflow decision maker to filter out inbound responses that come and decide which path they go down. If they say they're interested, my client gets notified. If they say they're not interested, we hit them with a second attempt. If they say wrong number, we delete their contact. And so it's, it is database reactivation and it's almost like database filtration. Now inside of high level, it's become twice as smart with the AI workflow decision maker. If you would like the actual prompt, I created a worksheet with the prompts that, that you can take the prompt and you can basically plug the entire prompt into chat GPT and say, I'm using high levels, AI workflow decision maker. Here are all of my prompts. Here's my outbound message. Here is my niche. Here's exactly what I'm doing. Can you rewrite these prompts exactly for me? Boom. It pumps you out the exact prompts you need. And then you just literally copy paste everything in, follow it step by step. And it works absolutely great. If you would like that, that prompt sheet, click the link, jump into the free school community, GHL blueprint. I will have this video. I do have another video, which actually shows a little bit deeper of how I'm using how like database reactivation is all set up and all of that. But that prompt sheet will be inside of there. So you will know exactly how to prompt the AI workflow decision maker and not run into some of the errors that I ran into because I was like literally pulling my hair out. You guys all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in future trainings. Woo!